Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on an AR-15 from a company that in the past I may have ragged on a little bit. This is The Saint from Springfield Armory. I believe this is their entry level AR-15. I know a lot of you guys may own it or have shot it or definitely see these in gun stores. They're pretty popular. And so I'm looking forward to comparing it to other AR-15s in its price range. But before I get into the things that I like and don't like and talk about this rifle, I wanna thank the people that always make these videos possible. First and foremost is the owner of this awesome AR-15. And that is my good friend, Matt. He's a subscriber and a Patreon. He lives here locally. He's a great guy. So thank you, Matt, for lending this to the channel to give me an opportunity to shoot. I want to thank my Patreons as always because through their monthly donations and support they help keep the lights on around here. You guys know I'm a YouTube bad boy. They don't always like to monetize my content so through their support I'm able to keep all this content coming and I want to thank my primary sponsor who always provides all of the ammunition for these range reports thus making them financially feasible and that is my good friend Mark from Brownworks. And I know if you're a subscriber to my channel, well, you probably like really nice guns. And I know some of your guns may require some nice grips. And I'm coming to you to tell you about an awesome company that makes the best grips on the market, Brownworks. Brownworks is a custom grip manufacturer. Mark over there is an artist. He is a craftsman. He makes grips for all different types of firearms that have different types of exotic woods and materials. But I know today we're here to talk about AR-15s. And believe it or not, he has a number of products for you, if that's what you're into. He makes wood grips and panels for, yes, AR-15s. How about that? If you want to have something that nobody else has at the range and you think these are cool, go check out Brownworks. He can custom make these, put on custom logos, engravings, and finish them in any different type of color that you can imagine. He also has other services like laser engraving pea bags for both the AR-15 and the AK-47. So not only does he make some of the best grips on the market, he is also expanding into the modern space sporting rifle area. So please go over there, check out Brownworks, see everything he has to offer. I'm gonna put a discount code for 10% off your first order over there. Go see what he has on his website. If you don't see what you're looking for, make sure to email him and tell him the Texas Gun Vault sent you. So now let's talk about what this rifle is. I've already alluded to it in the beginning. This is Springfield Armory's entry level or budget level AR-15. It's a gun that I think is marketed to the average gun guy or gal that is looking for a quality AR-15 that you can upgrade over time, but also has a lot of options right out of the box. So I know this is an attractive offering for a lot of people that aren't looking to spend two or $3,000 on an LMT or a Daniel Defense or an LWRC, but looking for something, as I said, that's going to be high quality. So let's talk about the things that I like and don't like about this particular rifle. And as always, I want to start with the positive. And the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that Springfield uses forgings for their upper and lower receivers. This is a mil spec option. And I like mil-spec AR-15s and M16s. I just like the look. I know a lot of companies today go with billet uppers and lowers and they can mill them out in special ways and give them special looks and aesthetics, but I just like the old classic look. And I like forged metal over billet, and I like the fact that Springfield kept that tradition with this particular rifle. So it's very much like a Colt 6920. And of course, those are the gold standard of AR-15s. Another thing I like about this is they kept all the ergonomics the same. Unfortunately, this gun is not ambi, but if you're a right-hander, you're probably gonna like it because everything is where you expect it to be. I know a lot of companies try to upgrade the ergonomics of AR-15s and they'll move things and add things. This is just the way it came since the 1960s, and I do like that a lot. And another thing that's kind of a holdover from the past is the fact it does have an A-pillar front sight. Even guns, that have monolithic rails. I like them to have that A-pillar front sight. There's just something about it. I like the look of those Daniel Defense ARs that have the rails and even has the A-pillar inside of that rail. It just has that classic look. It doesn't really get in the way of optics. 
it's just something cool. And so if I'm gonna own a gun like this, I definitely wanna have that A-pillar front sight. I know it's not for everybody, and this is kind of a personal aesthetic choice, but I like ARs with that. Even has the bayonet lug. Now, I think because this is a 16 inch barrel, you're not gonna be able to put on one of those bayonets, but I just like having that option. It just gives the gun that right military look for me. Okay, so now let's talk about the things that I don't like. And the things that I don't like are actually gonna be something that's kind of a big deal for me. I don't like the furniture that comes on this gun. And yes, you can change it out. You can change out the stock, the grip, and the handguard. Let's go through each one of these and I'll tell you what I don't like. First off, the stock. Now, it looks like it's a pretty attractive stock, but the thing I don't like about this is how hard it is to adjust. You gotta push down this lever, that spring is really sprung to pull that out. I kinda like more of the Magpul design, and so it actually took me a little bit at the range to quickly manipulate this. You gotta grip that thing kinda hard. I like the Magpuls where you can kinda rip them out a little bit quicker, so that I'm not a big fan of, and it has just this big lever on it. I guess it's to get all your fingers, but that spring is super stout. I think Magpul honestly just makes the best stocks in general for classic AR-15s. Now, when it comes to this particular grip, it's okay, but I like my grips to be a little bit more like the A2 angle. This seems to be a little bit more vertical. I know some people are really going to like that. I like my grips to be angled a little bit back, and so I know this is more of an aesthetic and a personal choice. So some people are gonna say, well, that's a silly thing to complain about because I absolutely love it. Well, on this one, I'm not the biggest of fans. Then we have the handguard, and this is where I think this gun really misses the mark. So let me go ahead and show you this particular handguard right here. And we do have some M-Lock slots on the top and on the bottom, but where I think they miss the boat is there's no M-Lock slots on the side. So we do have the, the Delta ring. You can replace this. That wouldn't be a problem at all. But if you're not gonna change that out, I don't know. This handguard just doesn't seem like it has enough M-Lock slots or slots in the right place for me. And it just looks kind of weird because of it to have that on the side. You know, if you don't want M-Lock slots on the side, you can buy grip panels like from Brownworks. Or if it has a Picatinny rail on the side, you can buy rail ladders and cover those up. But I'd like to have those options on the side. For me, this handguard just looks a little bit on the goofy side and just isn't as standardized as I would personally like. The next thing that I don't like about this particular gun is the barrel profile. This has what appears to be a heavy profile barrel, so you don't have any of the cuts in it to lighten it up. And a lot of people are going to say you don't need that because you're not running a grenade launcher on it. It's not a military gun. I totally get that. But, you know, the philosophy of an AR-15 is to be as light as possible. And as I've gotten older and built more ARs and shot more ARs, I prefer the ones that are a little bit lighter. And so having this big thick profile barrel out here it adds more weight it's not really going to help you with accuracy it's not going to do anything make the gun run better just give me a lighter profile barrel and you kind of feel it it's a little bit front heavy in my opinion they could definitely lighten this thing up and go back to the ar-15 roots of a very light profile barrel and give you something that's a little bit easier to carry. And I think novices or people just getting into firearms and maybe this is their first AR-15 purchase, that might go a long way because man, when you hold an AR-15A1 or an M16A1, you realize how far we have gotten away from Eugene Stoner's philosophy of a very light rifle. So yeah, that barrel profile, I just wish it was a little bit more like an M4. And finally, the last thing I want to say that I don't like, and this is going to be very subjective, is the marketing. You know, Springfield Armory names all their guns after biblical things. And here they call it the Saint. In my opinion, they should have just called it the SA-15. That's just what it should be. Don't give us all these funny names and have grip zone. No, this isn't an XD, so it has grip zone on the grip or anything, but they have all these weird marketing gimmicks. I'm just not a big fan of that. I guess I like my guns just to have letters and numbers. Don't give them names. Don't give them cute monikers. You don't have to do any of that. And for me, that's just a little bit weird. Just call it the SA-15 and it would be perfect. Springfield Armory 15.
That's it. Don't call it a saint. Don't give it a, a cutesy name. I'm just not a big fan of that type of marketing. And yes, I will say the same thing about the hiring companies that do the same thing like Q. Q has some really funny names for their silencers. But in my opinion, they're just goofy and it kind of makes fun of what the item actually is. And I think gun ownership needs to be something that is serious. Yes, it is fun, but we need to take it a little bit more serious than what I think some people do. So giving them these cutesy names sometimes I think can hurt us in the eyes of many people that might be fence sitters on the Second Amendment or are anti-gunners. They're like, see, they can't even name their guns something serious. It's all a joke to them. And anyway, that's just kind of a sidetrack to hear what I want to talk about. But yeah, the marketing of the AR-15 that they have here from Springfield, I'm just not a big fan of that. Just call it the SA-15. All right, so that's the things that I like and don't like. I know some people are going to say what I said is very subjective, and I fully agree. These are just my opinions. Don't forget that. Well, I'm going to load up one of these magazines with 30 rounds. I'm going to set the target out at 15 yards. I just want to see how this thing shoots, how the trigger is, see if this Romeo 5 Red Dot from Sig Sauer is zeroed. I think Matt said it was. I'm just curious if we're going to have any malfunctions. I just want to have some fun with this. So let's see what happens with the first magazine. So, I noticed a couple things. It shoots like a standard AR-15. There's not really much to talk about. The trigger is exactly what you would expect from a mil-spec AR-15 trigger. So actually, I kind of like it. I prefer single-stage triggers instead of double-stage triggers like you find in many upper-end AR-15s. There is one thing, though, that was kind of weird about shooting this. The red dot definitely is zeroed. Where I was putting it was where the rounds were going. However, it doesn't co-witness with that A-pillar front sight. Now, I talked about that earlier in the video, but it was really weird to see that dot off quite a bit from where that post is. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. It does not co-witness with these iron sights, but the red dot definitely is right on. I just thought it'd be worth noting. All right, so now I'm gonna set the target out at 25 yards, and as always, I wanna see what happens to this group. I'm just gonna shoot offhand. No, I'm not gonna bench rest this. I call this the accuracy portion, but it's just me shooting at a further distance, see if I have any troubles acquiring the target, seeing if the group is gonna open up any, and just see if I encounter any other issues. So I'm gonna set the target out, as I said, at 25 yards, shoot another 30 rounds, but this time it'll be at the head on this IDPA target. So let's see how I do.
and the gun's still working fine, no malfunctions, it's still pretty accurate, so once again, I'm happy with it. It's just like a nice AR-15. But I am noticing something when I shoot this a little bit slower. I smell a lot of gas, and the gun has a little bit more recoil. I think this gun is a little bit overgassed, which is typical for a mil-spec AR-15. So this gas system is not really that tuned. It might even be too overgassed, but some people are going to like that because it will help with reliability. I don't think you're going to have any issue with it because, as I said, it's kind of the way the military prefers it as well. All right, so now I want to give my wife Becky a chance to shoot this. She likes shooting AR-15s, and many times when she shoots these guns, she has a different perspective than I do and will bring up different things. So I'm excited to see what she thinks about this AR-15 from Springfield Armory and get her thoughts. So let's see how she does and what she says. And it looks like the gun's accurate for her too. She took out that hostage taker. She always jokes about wanting to shoot the hostage instead because if the hostage taker doesn't have a hostage, now he has no leverage over you. It's just one of those jokes we always talk about at the range. But yeah, she liked it. It shot really good for her and she likes this mil-spec trigger as well. It reminds her a lot of her AR-15 that I built for. It's a very mil-spec M forgery, an M4 clone essentially. So from that perspective, for the price point and the budget, it works really nice. It's just a good AR-15. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles. It just runs. It's just a good rifle. All right, so the next test I want to do was, of course, the quick magazine change. Now, remember, I am not a competitive shooter, but you may have this gun. You may want to use it for home defense. You may want to run it in a competition. So if an average gun guy like me can shoot this gun fast, get this magazine changed out quickly and get the gun back in action, well, I know you can as well. So I want to see if I encounter any problems, have any issues with that, see if the magazines drop free. So let's see how I do. Well, I definitely can shoot this trigger fast. The take up might be a little bit longer than what I'm used to, and that's why I had a little bit of a hiccup there. Magazines drop free, easy to get the gun back in action. So I think once again, for the price point, this thing runs perfect for me and I really like it. All right, I got one more test that I always do and it's not really a test, it's just me wanting to shoot the gun fast because I think this trigger is pretty darn good. I just want to do a 30 round mag dump, have a little bit of fun with it and see if I can keep all those rounds on target. So let's just shoot it fast and have some fun and then I'll give you my final thoughts. And man, does this gun want to run fast. I'm really impressed with it. And the accuracy was pretty good. Every shot was on target. So I'm happy with that. I think people underrate these A2 flash hiders, these birdcage flash hiders that you find on most mil-spec AR-15s. They're perfect. A lot of companies try to redesign them and come up with different flash hiders and things. The A2 just works really good. So I give them a lot of credit for deciding to use that. I know it's affordable, but man, is it effective. So what are my final thoughts on the Saint 
from Springfield Armory. Yes, it is a budget 15 and you get budget AR options on it. You don't get monolithic rails. You don't get top tier triggers. You don't get ambi controls, but you do get a gun that runs well. It's accurate and really is a nice M4 clone. I really think if a gun like this had full auto capabilities, it would do just fine in a military or police setting. But as a semi-automatic rifle, I don't think you can really ask for much more in a sub $1,000 AR-15. So I really think that Springfield designed this rifle with enough to really give you a great rifle at an affordable price. And many of the things that I talk about that I don't like, like the handguard, the stock, and the grip, you can replace. And in fact, many people do replace those on their rifles. However, I will say, in general, if you're looking for a rifle in this price point, and let's just say you don't like this furniture like I do, well, you can have other options out there. Like, I know that companies like Arms Unlimited sells stripped down Colt rifles for about the same price point that you can put on your own furniture. You also get a mil spec or a government profile barrel, which I kind of prefer, and you get the Colt name. But if you like this furniture, I really don't think you can go wrong. You get a good rifle right out of the box that's ready to go to the range, that seems to be accurate, it seems to be well built. I have no problems with it whatsoever. So it is just a good standard AR-15 M4 clone with a 16 inch barrel and you have lots of ways of upgrading it if that's the direction that you wanna go. So I have to say, even though it's a Springfield Armory, and yes, I have problems with Springfield Armory because in the past they did support gun control in Illinois, I'm actually gonna give this rifle pretty high marks. So it does what it's supposed to do. So my star rating for this is based off of its price point and how it performed. And I have to say, it easily gets four and a half stars out of five. The only reason I can't give it a perfect review is because I don't like this furniture at all. I think it's goofy. It doesn't work well for me and I wish it had more options. But really besides that and maybe the goofy name, I can't complain about the rifle. It's good. And so if you're looking for a budget AR-15, this is a good option, especially at its price point. You don't have to worry about buying and sourcing any other parts. It just comes right out of the box and it runs and it works and it's fun and it's definitely functional. So a lot of gun for a good price. So that's my review of The Saint from Springfield Armory. What do you guys think? Do you guys like budget AR-15s? Have you had a lot of success with them? And do you own one of these Saints? I would love to know if your experience is mirror mine. So let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.